I think we need a conception of false video that is much broader than completely synthetic. I think the kind of sexiness of deep fake, the fact that this is something, you know, AI is creating a completely new video, is really capturing people's minds. But the truth is, is that misleading video has existed as long as the format has existed. This interview itself is going to be edited. We actually don't have a lot of evidence of actual deep fakes being used in disinformation campaigns in the United States at least. The most common example that's been given has been a video that was posted of Nancy Pelosi that was slowed down to make it sound like her speech was slurred and that perhaps she was drunk. And then he had a press conference in the Rose Garden with all this um, short sort of visuals that a press conference in the Rose Garden with all this um, short sort of visuals that obviously were planned long before I said. This isn't a deep fake. This is what some people call a, a shallow fake or a cheap fake. Uh, and it's really technically something that my 12-year-old could do with iMovie. And I think this is one of the interesting issues here, is that a completely synthetic video might be easier to demonstrate falsity than something that is more subtly modified. And so I think it's, it's less likely that we're going to see deep fakes used to create completely new speeches, to create politicians saying things that are completely off the wall. But what you might see is, is the continued use of techniques to modify real video in a way that then can at least seed an argument of whether it's true or not. Uh, another great example of that was the Jim Acosta incident at the White House. And I, I think these kinds of more subtle modifications are harder to push back against and, and are probably going to be more likely to be deployed than, than completely synthetic video. We need to start to think more broadly about what authenticity means in the video format. We're moving into a world where the existence of deepfakes, even if they're not widespread, will allow people to call into question the existence of any footage that is actually legitimate. And so the, the legitimate media is going to need to think about how are you going to create records that, that prove that video was, was shot on location, that has GPS coordinates, that has a, a proven timestamp, and that you can prove it hasn't been modified in any way. And then I think the social media companies are going to need a definition of misleading video that is much broader than just deep fakes. In this future world, individuals are going to have to be much more careful about consuming information from sources they trust. And we're going to need laws and law enforcement to adapt to protect the most vulnerable against the use of synthetic media to cause harm. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.